The Platformatic SQL Mapper is integrated into Platformatic DB apps. In this video, we'll learn how to use the SQL Mapper and its querying features to interact with our database. Here we have a Platformatic app using Platformatic DB, and we've got a plugin file here that has a couple of empty API routes, and that's where we're going to be integrating the SQL Mapper. And we've got the server up and running over here in the terminal. So let's start with retrieving some entities using the find method. Here in our get root, we're going to use the platformatic entities. And this is made available automatically by the SQL map. And we can see we've got the quote entity and we're going to call the find method. And that will bring us back some records. So let's try that endpoint over here in the terminal. We'll use curl to make a request to the custom quotes endpoint. And we can see that that's pulling back all of those quotes for us. So that's a fairly straightforward use of the find method. We can actually go ahead and restrict the fields that are returned by adding a fields property. And we're going to, in this case, just restrict it to the ID, the quote, and the likes for a quote. Now, if we save that and head back, take a look in our terminal, we'll see that when we run this route, we've now only got those three fields ID, quote, and likes coming back. We can also restrict the entities that are returned. And we can do that here by adding an aware object. In this case, we're going to limit based on the quote itself. And we can use the like operator. And then we can say that any quote that matches or has the word you inside of it is what we want to limit our find to. And now if we go back again and run that request, we'll see that the only two quotes that come back are the ones that include the word you. The where object supports all of the common comparison operators, and we can see them here in the platformatic docs. If we want to change the order that the entities are returned in, we can actually do that here by adding an order by option, we'll pass an array, and inside that we can add a single sort on the field ID. And we're going to set the direction to descending. So we can see here the the records we've got back are in ascending order. And now if we make a request, this time we'll see that they're coming back in descending order by ID. With the find method, we can also add a limit. In this case, we're going to limit it to one record. And we can test that out again. We can see that we've got the one record coming back. And we can also add an offset as well. So this means it'll offset from the beginning of the record set. And so now we're getting a different record back. This is really handy if we want to build in pagination using the find method. Another handy method we can use is the count method. Now we can go here and change the method we're calling to count. And we'll change this to be count. And then we can actually here return the count value. Now if we go back and make a request to that endpoint, we'll see that we're getting back this count object. That's counting all of the records that are available there as quotes in our database. We can actually also add a where clause here if we want to limit it. In this case, we could limit it where the likes are greater than zero. And then if we go and run our query again through the request, we'll see that we've got no quotes that match that query right now. Now let's take a look at what we can do with actually saving data to our database. So here we have a post route. We've got a schema. We're reusing the schema that PlatformaticDB has generated for the quotes. And then we've got the request body coming through here. We're going to go ahead and use the save method, which is available on our entities object for quotes. And we're going to then pass through an input and that input's going to be the quote. So that's the request body they were getting through here. And that's what we're going to go and save into our database. Now to test this route, we're going to go into the Swagger UI for our API, and then let's scroll down to the custom quotes endpoint, and we can go ahead and try it out. So we can remove ID and create it up because those will be automatically added in by the API for us. And we're gonna say a fantastic quote, and this will buy somebody. And now that we've got those in, we need to set the movie ID and we can go ahead and execute that. Now that request has gone through to our API and we can see that that's been saved by our endpoint and we've got the response body of that saved quote that's gone into the database. We can also restrict the fields that are returned. 
So in this case, we're going to restrict it to the ID and the quote. And now if we head back into the Swagger UI and re-execute that request, we'll see that we only get the ID and the quote coming back in the response. It's also possible with the save method to update an existing entity. So we can see here, we've got an ID that's come back in the response, ID of six. So if we go and actually add that into our request body up here, and then we'll update the quote to V2. Now, when we execute that, we'll see that the actual quote that has been updated is ID six. So we've saved that existing record. So it's possible to actually use the save method effectively as an upset. If we want to insert multiple records into our database, we can call the insert method. And here we'll change this to be inputs. And instead of a single object, we're going to pass through the same object multiple times. So in our case here, we'll end up inserting that same quote into the database three times. So let's save that and head back into Swagger. And now when we execute this endpoint, after we remove the ID, we'll find that we've actually got three records coming back in the response. So that's been saved three individual times using the insert method. If we want to update multiple records, we can actually go ahead and use the update many record. We're going to replace what we've got here with input and we'll set the likes to zero. And then we're going to add a where condition so that we only target specific records in the database. So we're going to say where the likes are greater than zero. So now we can actually get rid of the schema that we have here because we don't need that for this route. And heading back into Swagger, we're going to refresh the route and we can try it out. And we can see that when we execute that, in our case, we don't actually have any quotes with likes at the moment. They're all set to zero, but this would actually go ahead and be able to reset that for us. In this case, we've got an empty array back. So we're always guaranteed to have a response body of an array. The last entity method we're going to take a look at is the delete method. So if we actually refactor this to use delete where the ID is equal to one. So we're just going to hard code the ID and we can get rid of the input here. And we can then go and change our API route to be a delete method. Then heading back into the Swagger UI, we'll give this a refresh. And we can go and now use our delete endpoint. So if we try that out, we execute that and we'll see that the response we get back is the quote that was deleted from the database. If we want to actually run our own SQL queries inside a Platformatic app, we can do that using the DB and SQL methods. So let's refactor what we've got here on our get root. And we're going to pull out the DB and SQL objects, which are available in app.platformatic. And we'll use them here to actually run a database query. And we're going to use this SQL helper. Now this SQL helper allows us to escape any kind of user input that we might want to put inside our query. In this case, we don't have any in here, but it's a good practice to put it on any query just in case we end up changing it to add input later. So in this case, we're going to return a few records after the first quote, and we're going to limit it to two. And we'll make sure that we actually return that result. Now we can test that over here in the terminal. And we'll see that we have a couple of results coming back using our custom SQL query.